Praise God, praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Go ahead, come in, press tag, and share, please. Uh, I couldn't. My computer is acting crazy again. But I want to talk about um, character. That's what God wanted me to talk about. So hold on a minute. I am getting to some things. Um, praise God, praise God. All right. So basically what God was talking to me about, and let me go ahead and do a disclaimer because I'm going to put this for my um, family that's on YouTube. Some people are asking me, I did not perm my hair. What happened is my hair was, it was long, but it was very much damaged, just to be honest with you. So in order to get a nice cut, a real cut so my hair can be healthy, I got it flat earned. I am still natural. Praise God. So just I thank y'all, you know, and there was somebody else that said something. I don't know. Y'all be saying so much. Anyway, it, no, anywho, <laughs> I love you guys. I really do. So let's talk about character. Character is your best trait. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. I got to say, I'm going to be quick and to the point. Character is what you have when the anointing is gone. Character is what you have when friends are gone. Character is what you have when family, because here's the deal. Everybody's watching you. And if what you say don't line up with what you do, then they can't trust you. And here's the deal. It's very important because I, I hate to say it like this, and I'm not trying to throw nobody under the bus, but there was a pastor. Oh, y'all gonna know who I'm talking about. But anyway, he had, you know, y'all remember when he had brought his wife that vehicle and he said, well, what I do on my own is, is my own business. Can I tell you something that I'm not trying to be funny? You have no private business when you do this. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And, I, and, and to be honest with you, we have no private life. No, 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 because here's the deal. It's based off what you do private that people respect you publicly. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. That's why people are getting in trouble. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Because they have no character. They're doing anything in closed, behind closed doors, and then they want to come preach and teach. No, that's not how it goes, because if we can't trust you privately with what you're doing, then how can you publicly say anything that we're supposed to believe? And that's me and anybody else. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the definition for character. It says, notice what it says. It says the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. I'm going to say that again. It says the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. That means what's what's your morals? What, what are you going to do when no one's looking? Come on, somebody. How do you? Character is so important, people, because guess what? If it don't line up with the integrity and honor, that's where I'm going. God say it's time for the body of Christ to start talking and acting and moving in character, integrity, and honor. If what you say, you got to do it. So many people say things and then you don't want to live up to what you say. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. God says not only that, what you do in your private life, life distinguishes if you're going to have a heavy anointing. So actually that you can bring others out. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Oh, let, let me, let me, let me continue. Let me tell you. What are the traits of a character, of character? Praise God. Y'all have to excuse me. I am really, really tired, but I had to get up on here and do this. All right. It says the six pillars for character is trustworthiness. Can people trust you? Come on, somebody. Let's, let's be real. Anytime you're allowing somebody to speak into your spirit, if they're not living it, then whatever spirit that they're working with, that I promise you that's entering to you. Some of you don't understand why something is going on in your church. Can I tell you something? However, all you got to do, thank you, Lord. This is what I want y'all to do. And that's for everybody that's going to listen to this video. Next time you go to your church, can you just be quiet and just, just look and listen? I'm not saying don't get into the worship. I'm not saying don't get into the spirit. But I want you to do a, a little do a little analyzation. Just kind of like sit there and watch. If everything you see does not line up with the word, that's the spirit. It could be lust. It could be bitterness. It could be sexual. It could be immorality. It could be, um, I'm just being real, homosexuality. Whatever you see in your church, I promise you, all that stuff is coming from the top. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And one of the things that people don't understand, when you step in that type of atmosphere, everything that people are working with, Mm, Y'all ain't ready for me. Can be attachment. 
And I'm not, hold on, let me go ahead and do a disclaimer. I am not bashing church. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be in a church. If it is spirit ordained, if it is anointed, if the pastor is a pure man of God, a real man of God, a holy man of God, an anointed man of God, definitely uh, the woman of God, if it is real. But if it is not real, whatever you attach to, will be attached on you. Some of you wondering why you're acting crazy at night, why you can't sleep, why your finances is acting funny. What are you attached to, said the Lord? Come on, somebody, hallelujah, because whatever you attach to, that's what you're going to go through. Somebody write there in the comments. Whatever you attach to, to that's what you're going to go through. Come on, somebody. So let me tell you the six characteristics, traits. The first one is trustworthiness. Can people trust you? I'm talking about in public and in private. If you can't, let's go here. I'm going here. I didn't want to. I found out. I don't want to say the town. I found out that this pastor's a crossdresser. Hold on. I'm talking about right now. Right now. And I say, and they still sit under him? He a crossdresser. Come on, y'all. Y'all don't understand. I'm not trying to bash nobody. That spirit. So every time he in the pulpit, homosexuality going out. Both ways. Yo, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. This stuff real. All right. The second characteristic, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship. Now, why citizenship? Because guess what? Who are you? Who are you for real? Because here's the deal. You want to know who you are? What do you do when no one's watching? Are you looking at porn? Are you having an affair? Are you cheating on your taxes? Are you still, y'all ain't ready for, are you still in time from your doctor? I'm, about, I, I, I'm sick and you, and you know you're not sick. You just don't feel like going to work. Uh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let's talk about what is good character. In general, people are considered to have good character, often have traits like integrity, honesty, courage, loyalty, fortitude, and other important virtues that promote good behavior. These character traits define who they are as people, and they are highly influenced the way that we they influence the choices that make that we make in our lives. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. I thought y'all heard that somebody run the doorbell. So that's why I was like, oh my God. <laughs> All right, praise God. Let's talk about the four different personality types, okay? So the first personality type is, praise God, praise God, hallelujah. All right, four personality types. Actually, there are eight. I didn't want to get into that, but um, okay. So let's go briefly about them. Okay, the first one is attractive, believe it or not charming ambitious charisma how many pastors have charisma oh come on somebody i see it all on facebook there are a lot of people that i see that y'all y'all are share the video can i tell you something immediately when i look at them i see the running game can i tell you something you can't tell me that when the anointing is present, that I'm just going to tell you about prosperity. The devil is a lie because I don't care how much money you have. If you have sickness in your body, you need a word from God. If you're going through a divorce, you need a word from God. If your marriage needs healing, you need a word from God. If your son going through something, you need a word from God. If your daughter going through something, you need a word from God. What am I saying? It's your character mixing up with your, matching up with your anointing. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It has to match up. And I asked something I had to learn and walk through myself. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And it's in stages. It's in process. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So basically what I got on here to say is that God says it's time to walk in good character. God is restructuring the church. Let me tell you, let me prophesy to y'all. You know what's going to happen in 2020? God says that he's purifying the church. He's consecrating the church. He's bringing it back into integrity. He's bringing it back to morals. He's bringing it back to where we love each other. You, you, you're too scared to tell somebody the truth in church because you don't know if you're going to get backlash or if the preacher going to preach about it but on the pulpit. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You hear what I'm saying? So you have to be strong in the Lord and walk in good character because talent, it'll keep you only for, oh, Lord, I don't want to bring up that man. There's a powerful pastor that's dead and gone. He had the anointing. He could preach. He could teach. He could reach, but his character was flawed. Can I tell you something, sisters and brothers? I don't care how good your gifts are and your talents. If you have no character, and I promise you, this is how the enemy do. When you doing stuff, you ain't got no business. Please listen to me. This is very important. Don't, don't negate this message just because I ain't hooping and hollering. Come on, somebody. Let me tell you something. 
what this is how the enemy do. Let me go ahead and, and make it visible. The enemy looks, mm, they like lust, or they like little girls, or they like little boys, or they like both. I'm going to get them. And the enemy set you up. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The enemy set you up. So don't ever think that you're getting away with anything because the enemy, set, he's the greatest setter up. Come on, somebody. I made up a whole world. I promise you. And, and, and it lays dormant. That's why I'm writing that book, Residue Spirit. It lays dormant until the right time when it thinks that you're weak. You see, let me tell you something about the enemy. He waits till you're weak. And that's when he really presented. He said, now is the time. He's, he's very strategic. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So what am I saying? Any hidden sin in your life, deal with it now. Hallelujah. Because if you don't deal with it, I promise you, people of God is going to deal with you. And I, I, I'm a witness to that. You know, and I, I'm very transparent on purpose. When I was um, when I was being processed, you know, I was still trying to do this and do that. I get caught every time. But yet the ones that have been doing it, they wouldn't even get caught. Ain't nobody would tell them nothing. And I said, God, why me? He said, because you're not going where they're going. You're going to do this thing right, Deanna. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You have to walk in integrity. You have to walk in honesty. You have to walk with morals. You have to gird your mouth. That's another thing God said. He, he tired of us just be quiet. Let me, let me tell you how it's supposed to go, and I'm going to get off, out, off of here. If you don't like the way somebody's doing something, unless it's a dust said the Lord, your position is to pray for them. Okay, I don't really care for them. I don't like the way they do stuff. But you know what we do? We start putting our mouth on people. If it, if you didn't have authorization, if God didn't tell you, and then y'all get up on Facebook and do it, everything that you say, you're going to get backlash from because God never authorized you to speak against that person unless it was thus said the Lord. And then that has to be in order. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Our position as the body of Christ is to start praying for each other more. You know somebody got hit in sin, pray for them. You know somebody cheating, pray for them. You know somebody committing adultery, pray for them. You know somebody doing drugs, pray for them. But y'all will sit up there and talk about them until you break their spirit. And when you break their spirit, they're gone. The, 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 the enemy said, oh, I got them isolated. Now I can really take them out. I told you on a live, and I'm going to tell you again, the body of Christ is the only people that leave their children, their, their soldiers wounded. The devil don't do that. As a matter of fact, they work together. Demons work together. When we see somebody hurting, everybody ostracizes them. Oh, I got to go here. I didn't want to go here. I didn't want to bring that man up. But God keep, every time I have an example, God will use him as an example. So please, I'm not trying to, you know, hurt nobody. If some of his family or friends, I'm not, I just have to be obedient. Bishop Eddie Long, and I keep saying it. I was there in the 80s. I was going to DeVry in Atlanta. And again, I was under Dr. Cynthia Hill. And our church was small. And Bishop Eddie Long, that man was so powerful. I don't care what y'all say. I know he did some things. That's between him and God. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you right now, when he needed, oh, Lord, I got to say it. How you want me to say it? When he needed them friends and them people that he was with, they all well, have nothing to do with you. you. You're in trouble. Can I tell you something? And I got to hit it hard in, in it. It's when people are in trouble, they need you the most. Hallelujah to his name. I remember when I was in trouble, everybody liked to run. Ooh, they don't want, I mean, they'll know your calls. They'll talk about you. They say, ooh. But nobody will call and say, you know what? I know you might be going through something. You might even be wrong. But I love you. I'm going to pray for you. And I pray that you have strength enough to repent. We don't do that. We beat people up and, and ostracize them. And then that, that breaks their spirit. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Y'all get where I'm going. I ain't got to go too deep because I ain't trying to hurt nobody. But at the same token, y'all know that's true. I'm not saying when somebody wrong, don't call it out. But what I'm saying is that we've all been wrong in life. And it was somebody that spoke to us and said, you're still a mighty man of God. You're still a mighty woman of God. You can get from um, that. Now, you might have to repent. You might have to tell the truth. I just said something. Don't you know when you try to hide stuff, God will allow your life to be taken? You just, It's the same way you did it publicly or privately. It's the same way you got to, I repent, I repent, I repent. And I know it can be shameful. I know it could be hurtful, but... Y'all better stop just operating in any old kind of way. You got to be real with God because God will expose you. And let me tell y'all something, because this is real talk I'm talking about. A soft exposure, you can come back from that. But a hard exposure, that'll hit you to the core of your spirit. Because your family, friends, everybody looking at you crazy now. Hallelujah! And God, and hold on, because I'm a witness. God will give you a right. He'll give you time. 
stop playing get that thing right repent and if you, and I, i'm going here on purpose if he tell you to publicly repent and you don't death waits i know you don't like me and i know y'all know what i'm trying to say that stuff real y'all want to know that's what happened you can't do it that way and I, I you might lose everything but at least you save your life you should not die said the lord you that's why i said this this is death to anybody playing and just because i'm on facebook Y'all don't understand. It's still real. That's why I don't understand if you be playing on Facebook and everything else for money and honey and funny. God will hold you accountable because if you preach that word and don't live it, that is an abomination to him. And I can show you in the scripture because you are lying to God and lying to people for some money, honey, or funny. And he going to hold you responsible. Hallelujah. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Character. Have good character. And you have to walk it out. I wasn't always this person. I mean, I I, I was a mess. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. even when I got up on here, I, I meant well, but I didn't I didn't say everything right. I didn't do everything right. I hurt people, I said things. I can't take that back. But you're supposed to learn as you grow and as you go through it. You learn to be better and not bitter. You learn and, and, and people that don't forgive you, as one of them, God bless them, let them go. But y'all are harboring too much, too much. And that's why the body of Christ don't have a, a move of the power of the Holy Ghost. Because offense, defense, unforgiveness, lust, homosexuality. You got to deal with them sins. Or God said they're going to deal with you and, and mess up your character. And, and guess what? I don't care what nobody say. The end of that thing is the devil coming to steal, kill, and destroy. How many people we've seen be destroyed? Hallelujah. How many people do he steal from? How many people do he kill? This stuff is not a game. Character is real. Integrity is real. Honor is real. That's all God told me to talk about tonight was character. And, and I'm still walking it out. You have to mean what you say and say what you mean. Don't lie to God's people. And if you can't do that, you know what? I'm going to pray about that. I can't do that. And quit saying yes. I hear you, God. Quit saying yes so fast. It's all right to say no. You know what? Let me pray about that. Because here's what the enemy do. The enemy will try to make you say fast, quick, yes, quick, fast. That's not God. This is the way. This is protocol, by the way, also. When somebody asks you something and you're not quite sure, um, let me pray about that and get back with you. That's how you do it. That's why a lot of you, your words are no good because you don't come through. And, and, and people, I never understood. People label you. You know, I used to think, I don't need nobody. I do what I want, say what I want. I found out that's 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 the farthest thing from the truth. Let me tell you something. I know we have all this technology, but word of mouth is still more powerful. Come on, somebody. I'm going to end it like this. I was uh, while I was getting my hair done, I was looking at Trump stuff, and I don't even like that. But and I start to ask the attorney, but God said, "No, listen to the verbiage." For two hours, I listened to it, and God said, "You notice it's, it wasn't actions that they judging; it's the words." He said, "Deanna, that's how powerful your words are, and the enemy will use it against you." Hallelujah! You don't hear what I'm saying? Watch your words, watch your actions, watch who you are. Come on, somebody! Hallelujah! I pray over myself. I take my arm and I pray over myself. Father God, keep me mentally strong, physically strong. Let me walk as a good person, be as a good person. Don't let it be a facade. You know how people are on here, oh hallelujah, and behind closed doors cussing, fussing, doing all kind of. Be who God have called you to be for real, because people can see through you. I'm telling you the truth; they see it, and if they have wisdom and discernment, they really see you. Hallelujah. So I pray that you understand how important this video is. Is It's not always hooping, hollering, or trying to get you excited. Sometimes it's conversing and telling, thus saith the Lord. We need to do better and be better. Move in the spirit. Speak what you mean and mean what you speak. Be a person of authority, but be a person of your word. If you're not going to do it, say, I'm not going to do it. Quit lying. I hear you, God. Too many of y'all Christians lying. You know you're not going to. Just don't say nothing. Let me get back with you. And get back with people. That's another thing. Y'all just leave people because you don't think you are. Y'all looking for the big wheels. But can I tell you something? God says the little foxes that I that I see. Because if you can't handle a little thing, why would I even trust you with something big? God says. If you can't handle, if you can't do right by the little test that I send, the people I send, but you want something greater. But you can't handle what you got, God says. 
Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like that. She says, sometimes the church will put you in ICU. Girl, you better stop. You better stop, Miss Janelle Robinson. That's real. We're in an identity crisis. You don't know who you are. Learn who you are. Receive who you are. Walk in who you are. And you, you can't do this without God. I tried. I tried a man. I tried this. I tried that. That was all a lie. But when I say, God, I don't know how to do this. Just teach me and help me. And if I make a mistake, let me be willing enough to say, I repent. I didn't do that right. Please forgive me, my brother, my sister. Whether they receive it or not, you didn't do it. You're just quit being angry. Quit speaking out of turn. Quit speaking death to people. Even, even a murdering spirit getting on here talking about which just happened. Or they, no, 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 no. If it's not a dust, said the Lord, keep your mouth and let God be God, said God. Hallelujah to his name. All right, all right, all right, you guys. I got to get out of here. God bless you. God keep you. God's doing a new work in all of us. And I'm telling you, I see some great things. I see revival coming for real, not for play, but we got to be pure. We got to repent. We got to walk in love, love each other, even with the ugly stuff, because we're not always pretty. Y'all know we be tripping. Love them. Hallelujah. My motto is love people back to life. There it is. Quit breaking each other's spirit. If you don't like somebody, it might not even be what you think. Because most of the most of the time, in this day and age, you would do this anyway. <laughs> Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. Whew. So God bless you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. We're all our soldiers for that is who we are. God bless. Have a blessed night, you guys.